Today, I will be introducing an interactive learning tool called Mentimeter and will evaluate it using the 4E's framework. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge that I am an immigrant setter and I live at the uh, live and work on the lands of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, also known as the Songhees and Eskimo First Nations communities, uh, Victoria. Um, and two weeks ago, I spotted a group of orca whales swimming just around Dallas Road Beach. They were hunting for a seal, and I saw that whale sighting for about 10 minutes. It was a very special moment shared with my daughter, and I did some research what orca symbolize in indigenous. As you know, orca, they travel um, in a group, and they protect each other, um, the members of their pod. So, Orca actually symbolize family, harmony, travel, community, and protection. That was a very new and interesting learning. So um, I use Mentimeter in my engagement meeting, um, and I use it to brainstorm, training as a learner, a moderator, and a facilitator. So I'm curious to know how many of you have heard of Mentimeter? Raise your hand if you have heard of Mentimeter. Nice. And raise your hand if you have used Mentimeter. No. Okay. So I hoped uh, if you have heard of Mentimeter and maybe you haven't used it after learning uh, from today's presentation, you'll learn something new and it might encourage you to try Mentimeter. So Mentimeter is an online presentation tool. It's also an audience response system and it's designed to work digitally, in person and remote. It can be used to create presentations, quizzes, word clouds, questions and answers, skill, polls, and participants can interact live with it and you can get real-time results. So it's really a great uh, presentation tool to facilitate audience engagement and involve students in your class. So how does it work? You sign in with Google, Facebook, or email. Then you will get an assigned code for your presentations. And others can join simply by going on to menti.com and entering the code or use the QR code. And then you create questions and presentations. So you can use interactive slides to ask learners any questions. You can add text an image slide to visualize it. Learners can respond and ask questions. Everything they respond to is anonymous. And you get instant results. The responses are dynamic and show immediately on screen. It can also be used for in-person, synchronous, or asynchronous presentation. You can run some really informative quizzes to test knowledge or post lesson survey to gather student feedback. You can use word clouds and polls to have students submit their answers, thoughts, and questions. And you can use rankings or skills. And now I'm going to uh, flip over to the platform. Just a moment. And to show you how it looks like. Okay. So this is the assigned code. All you need to do is to hit content and you can choose in between any of those. So let's say you want to know who is joining from where in the world. So you could choose pin on image and then you could type where are you joining us from? All right, and then you can add you can add some pictures if you want to, and then you can create a different design for the next slide. So new slide, maybe open ended, and then you can type your questions. So it's quite easy, and then you can go to present mode. Oops, I'm going to get out of present mode and go back to our slide. All right, so 
there are many types of interactive slides you could use in Mentimeter. I won't be covering all of them in, in interest of time, but I will cover the most popular slides, three of them. The first one I'm going to introduce you is Word Cloud. It's one of Mentimeter's most popular slides. It's also a really great way to break the eye at the beginning of the class, spark conversations, and to get an unbiased representation. Essentially, Word Cloud is generated from audience answer, and then all you need to do is just simply enter the question and let your audience submit your answer. And all the submissions appears in real time. Every idea and word submitted appears in real time in the variety of colors. And the more popular the submission, the bigger the word sent out. So why use a word cloud? When you use a word cloud in a live setting, you can actually increase the teacher and student interaction and engagement in your presentations. You can use it to summarize, recap, check if everyone understood you, and find out how people feel. So the next one is multiple choice. Multiple, multiple choice slides are another popular slide types. It is suitable to use when you want students to choose from um, a few predefined options. And you can use that to collect answers, thoughts, opinions, data. We have simple multiple choice questions. And students get to vote on the option, and their answer will show up in real time. So next, we have open-ended questions. It is another commonly used slide. And this question type is suitable when you want to use pre uh, if you don't want to use predetermined answer, you want voters to write something longer, up to 200 characters. And with open-ended question, participants can just type in free text answer. And for me particularly, I use it as post-course evaluation from participants. So one thing worth noting is that Mentimeter has a profanity filter that you could prevent inappropriate words from audience input. And here's where you could activate the feature. Go next to your presentation slide name, um, hit settings, go to your language preference, and when language preference pops up, you could select all the languages for the profanity filter, click it, and then hit done, and it will be activated. In the past, when you use Mentimeter, as a participant and a presenter, you have to navigate between presentations and Internet Explorer tab. But Mentimeter has improved their function by integrating it into Zoom, Teams, and PowerPoint. And you don't need to switch platform anymore. You can just install them in PowerPoint, Zoom, or Teams. And as a presenter, you can just end activities on this platform without needing to open the internet uh, explorer. Um, if attendees install Mentimeter in their Teams and Zoom, they can also directly participate with the interactive activities without needing to leave Teams and Zoom. And here is where you go. Um, go to marketplace zoom.us um, and then look for Mentimeter and then just click request. Mine is waiting approval from VCC Zoom administrator right now. Um, you can also go to Teams where the app button is, install it, uh, look for Mentimeter, and then install it, and it will be integrated. There's also a way to uh, integrate it in PowerPoint. And now that you know more about Mentimeter, will you try using Mentimeter as a learning tool? So. I'm going to encourage people to uh, log into menti.com and type in the code 52342658 and um, vote and see if it actually works on my PowerPoint. Sorry, I didn't get the code. Sorry, Naomi. Uh, 52. Three, four, two, six, five. Two, six, five. There you go. Yeah, I see. To get the response. 
the presenter. Oh, there must be two people here. So yeah, yeah, it looks like there's two. So yeah. yeah. So thank you for trying that out with me. So, um, we are going to pivot to evaluate Mentimeter as a learning tool using the four E's framework. The four E's are excite, educate, engage, and evaluate. So for excite, Mentimeter uses gamification and real-time results. And this really uh, energized the students, the real-time uh, real online activities. Mentimeter uses visualization tools for the presentation, content, and the real-time results. It is very user-friendly and intuitive. You don't need extra training to use it. And it also provides uh, the audience or the user continuous instruction throughout the process. And it is anonymous. It allows students to express their opinion anonymously. It encourages students who would normally not share their opinions to participate. And this feature really makes um, this new technology less intimidating and more enjoyable. Studies found that Mentimeter increased students' interest about the subject and helped them pay attention in class. However, some students may resist the use of new technology, and it could be harder for those who are less tech savvy to embrace Mentimeter. And for all these reasons, I give it an A minus. So for educate, I want to talk about active learning. And active learning happens when students are actively or experientially involved in a learning process, not just passively listening. And this was from our uh, Barclay and Major book from Student Engagement Technique. So during the pandemic lockdown, it was really difficult for a lot of uh, higher education students to follow class effectively, attentively on the computer and at home. And students highlighted that many meters has enabled them to maintain attention and concentration during online classes. And here are some of the students' quotes from that study. Also, here are the reviews of teachers who use Mentimeters in their classroom. So for educate, many educators share that Mentimeters have made active learning possible in their class. Several studies found that Mentimeter involved learners in the process of learning, enables them to participate during online classes, and it can be used to implement uh, Bloom's taxonomy approach. So for example, you could use open-ended or word cloud slides to help students recall, remember facts and concepts, or you could also have the multiple choice or open-ended slides um, to help students analyze information. So Mentimeters allow students to leverage experience, which is the foundation of, for learning. Participants can share their personal experience and opinions, but you cannot import content previously made into Mentimeters, so it would take some time to craft your presentation. Because of its limited interaction activities for the free version, and also some cost limitations, and institutional fundings, I'm going to rate Mentimeter a B plus for educate. Oops. So many educators shared that uh, Mentimeters, oops, right here, sorry, the right slide now. So teachers have integrated Mentimeters into their courses in many ways. And these are all the reasons they use Mentimeter. Teachers have integrated Mentimeters to make students a part of their lessons, and they use it to break the ice, do pre-assessment of knowledge, or do formative assessments. Also, students highlight that Mentimeter helps them to improve their attention, engagement, learning, uh, and interactions. And during the pandemic, it made a huge difference in facilitating student participation for both synchronous and asynchronous online learning. Also, Mentimeters help promote a more 
democratic and inclusive participation in class because it enables simultaneous response from unlimited numbers of participants. And it really encourages introverted students to share their opinion because it eliminates the concerns of judgment, self-consciousness, or fear of mistakes or fear of public speaking. However, critics does highlight that this tool is challenging for those who are visually impaired. Um, Mentimeter don't have the read aloud functions. So those who are visually impaired cannot read the question and answer on a device or see the result in real time. For this, I rate Mentimeter A minus for engage. And for evaluate, Mentimeters have the feature that allow teachers to adapt classroom assessment techniques to assess student learning progress and performance with pre-made existing templates. So Imperial College London uses Mentimeter to conduct pop quiz, formative assessment, and exit tasks. Pop quiz allows educator to assess if the class is following a lecture. And as you know, formative assessment, we learn from the evaluation course. Formative assessment is ongoing and continuous. It is like a pulse check to see if learners are understanding the concept or if instructors need to spend more time on the concept, which then allows teachers to adjust their teaching method and also allows students to adjust their learning strategies to improve their understanding. An example for formative assessment would be what do we do in today's lesson? Exit pass is another assessment technique for educators to assess if students understood the content, especially at the end of the class. So instructors prompt students to answer certain questions regarding that class. For example, um, name three things you learned today. Name three questions you still have. So for evaluate, because Mentimeter has pre-made assessment templates, which make it easy and quick to prepare, present questions and collect answer. As well, um, this response that are collected are anonymous, which create that safety for people to share their thoughts, or those who might be shy to admit they don't understand what was taught. Um, you do have to export the assessment data to analyze though, and it's not suitable for summative evaluations. Um, for all these superior features for evaluations, I rated Mentimeter A plus for evaluation. And in summary, we've talked about what is Mentimeter, how it works, how to make interactive lessons, word clouds, open-ended questions, multiple choice, seamless experience feature, and we evaluate it against the four E's, excite, engage, educate and evaluate. Um, this is the summary of my evaluations uh, for Mentimeter. And as various studies demonstrated that Mentimeter boosted student participation and improved learning online, asynchronous, synchronous, and in face-to-face -face setting, I highly recommend you to explore Mentimeter as a multimedia learning tool because of the ease of use, its high potential to excite, engage, educate and evaluate in a learning setting. These are my references. And I'm wondering if you have any questions. You're welcome to type in your questions on Mentimeter, or you can just raise your hand and we could uh, answer your questions. Thank you. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, can you see me or no? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I just have actually two questions. Because when you, you showed the map and then like you, you, you made like a quiz or something, um, yeah. can, do you do that in real time during your presentation, for example, amongst like 100 participants, or you have to prepare it uh, beforehand and then embed it? Yeah, I think you have to prepare it before time so it um, moves smoothly. Because like, if you create it, then like during your presentation, you're using some time to create this and people are just waiting. So usually what I do is I create um, um, before 
and I, I test it to make sure it works. And then um, it will be more seamless. Oh, okay. And then but um, I think it's very important to and then test it first. Mm -hmm. So basically lots of um, preparation before the presentation, right? I mean, you have to do the quizzes, yeah. the polls, embed it, test it before you yeah. do the presentation. Okay. Um, yeah. Second and, then, and last, go, go ahead. So like when I embed this on my presentation, I actually did a test using my phone to make sure that it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. and one last thing. Be, um, um, regarding evaluation, you won't be able yeah. to evaluate um, the student. I mean, one student at a time, right? It's more like for the entire class. It will be aggregated. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah. there's no way that you can evaluate based on a particular student. Are they getting the concept? So, okay. No, because okay. it's like anonymous. So yeah. That's one of the uh, cons, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you cannot use that for summative evaluation because for summative evaluation, you assigned a grade to someone for that grade. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it seems very interesting. And you made the presentation really good I mean for me to understand you know and I'm very much interested in using this in my future instruction so thank you thank you Mylene and like if you have any questions how to use it like I'm very happy to help you yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> yeah I'll do it with our cohort like our <laughs> workshop yeah <laughs> It was great. I really enjoyed that. But I'm sorry I, I came late. 